Welcome class 10 to the final part of chemical combination or <coughs> chemical bonding. So last class we dealt with the formation of uh, molecules of elements like uh, chlorine, uh, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen. Today <coughs> we'll talk about covalent compounds. We'll talk about covalent compounds, the non-polar covalent compounds like uh, methane, carbon tetrachloride, okay, methane and carbon tetrachloride. So formation of methane. Formula is CH4 made up of carbon, <coughs> atomic number um, 6 and hydrogen, atomic number is 1. All right. Now, since it is between carbon and hydrogen, both are non-metals. So obviously, when non-metals combine, what kind of bond is formed? It is covalent bond, okay? A covalent bond. So carbon, electronic configuration is two and four. How many elements, how many electrons do they have in the last shell or the valence shell? Four. Hydrogen, the only electron it has in the first orbit. Now we very well know that hydrogen uh, follows the <coughs> duplet rule. Hydrogen follows the duplet rule. That means since it has only one shell, the first shell. So in the first shell maximum electrons you can have is two. So it will follow duplet rule whereas carbon has uh, in the second shell, maximum number of electrons you can have is 8. So therefore, the carbon will follow octet rule to have the stable electronic configuration. So now, since it is between two non-metals, we already know that what type of bond is formed? It is covalent. Yeah, it's a purely covalent, non, in fact, non-polar covalent compound. So, car carbon, we, carbon atom. We will talk about the last shell. We are talking about the last shell here. Last shell will have four electrons and the crosses symbolizes the electrons of carbon in the valence shell. So, how many electrons does carbon need to be stable? Carbon needs four electrons to be stable. But hydrogen in this case will have, which has only one electron in the outermost or the first shell, needs one more electron to have a stable electronic configuration. So one atom of hydrogen will come and share one electron, the only electron it, it has with one of the carbon atom. So hydrogen will have two electrons in the outermost shell. So it is satisfied by sharing. Now carbon, as we know, we can, we'll have one, two, three, four, five. After sharing one electron with one hydrogen atom, carbon will have five electrons. It needs three more. So another is hydrogen atom will come and share its only electron with one of the electron of carbon. Similarly, now carbon will have how many electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six electrons. It needs, carbon needs two more. So therefore, another hydrogen atom will come and share its only electron with the, this electron of carbon. So therefore, carbon will have now how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. It will needs one more. Where does it come from? It will share its only electron with another hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom. Okay. So therefore, this is the formation of methane CH4. So, carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell. So, it will share one electron with hydrogen, another electron with hydrogen, another electron with hydrogen, and the last one, last electron with another hydrogen atom. So, therefore, the formation of, so thus, this is the formation of methane molecule. It's a non-polar covalent compound. Next, we talk about is, carbon tetrachloride carbon tetrachloride
carbon tetrachloride, carbon, atomic number six, chlorine, a met, uh, halogen having 17 electrons. That means atomic number is 17. So carbon electronic configuration is two and four, and for as for chlorine, it is two, eight, and seven. So like carbon, <coughs> we know that carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell. So this is carbon atom having four electrons in the outermost shell. So how many electrons does carbon need to be stable? Carbon needs four electrons to be, to have a stable electronic configuration. Chlorine, atomic number 17, electronic configuration is two, eight and seven. How many electrons does chlorine need to be stable? It needs one electron to be stable. So therefore, chlorine atom, since it needs only one electron to be stable, so, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This chlorine atom will share one electron with the carbon and therefore chlorine will have a stable electronic configuration having eight electrons in the outermost shell. Whereas carbon will have one, two, three, four, and five. It needs three more. So similarly, like methane, another chlorine will come in and share its one electron with carbon atom. So chlorine will have stable electronic configuration now. Similarly, another chlorine will come in here and forms its and shares one electron. So how many electrons will chlorine have again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Similarly, eight. Similarly, eight. What about carbon? Carbon, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven electrons share. Uh, it will have, carbon will have, after sharing three electrons with chlorine. It needs one more. Where, is, where will it come from? It will share another, share the electron with another chlorine atom. Oh, sorry. Now, chlorine, all, all the four atoms of chlorine will have eight electrons in the outermost shell, will have a stable electronic configuration and after sharing four electrons with different, four different chlorine atoms, carbon will also attain its stable electronic configuration. That is having eight electrons in the outermost orbit for carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is how the another non-polar covalent compound, carbon tetrachloride is formed by the sharing of electrons. Why sharing of electrons? Because both the constituent elements taking part in the formation of carbon tetrachloride are both non metals, carbon and chlorine. Since both of them are non-metals, so electrovalent, uh, sorry, covalent bond is formed. Now, we will talk about uh, formation of ammonia, water and hydrogen chloride gas or hydrochloric acid. <coughs> now, these water uh, ammonia and HCl, they are polar covalent compound. So you must be wondering what polar covalent compound is and what non-polar covalent compound is. First I'll tell you about the non-polar covalent compounds like carbon tetrachloride, methane and so on. So uh, covalent compounds are said to be non-polar covalent com compound when shared pair of electrons are equally distributed between two atoms equally distributed one electron one one atom one electron one electron one electron so uh, four atoms uh, four uh, electrons of chlorine is sharing one electron each with four hydrogen atoms so it is a non polar covalent compound so non polar covalent compound is formed when shared pair of electrons are equally distributed between the two atoms that means no uh, electrons will be left unshared that is what it means so that is a non-polar covalent comp compound there is no charged separation so i'll talk about charge separation during the formation of hydrogen or polar covalent 
compound. Now we come to the formation first. We will talk about the pole, uh, the formation of. I'll tell you the formation of polar covalent compounds, and then you will understand the properties of polar covalent compound. What is charge separation, and so on. Okay. Now first, the formation of ammonia. Ammonia, as you know, is a basic gas. The only basic gas we have to study in class 10, that is ammonia. The formula is NH3. Nitrogen, the atomic number, you, you, have, you have to know the electronic configuration. So nitrogen, the atomic number is 7. Whereas uh, for hydrogen, the atomic number is 1. So what will be the electronic configuration of nitrogen? 2 and 5. Hydrogen will obviously be 1 because the atomic number is 1. It has the only one electron and it is found in the first shell. So how many more electrons does hydrogen need to be stable? One more because in the first shell it has it has only one electron. Maximum you can have is two. So therefore since it follows the duplet rule hydrogen needs one electron. So when we talk about the uh, atom of nitrogen how many electrons does it have in the first shell? Uh, in the first shell, two. In the last shell or the uh, valence shell, it has five. So one, two, three, four, and five electrons. So how many electrons does uh, nitrogen need to be stable? It needs uh, three more electrons. Where does it come from? Obviously, it is combining with hydrogen. So it has to come from hydrogen. So therefore, since they are both non-metals, they will share electrons. So one hydrogen, since hydrogen atom, is deficit of one electron so it will share its one electron with one uh, electron of nitrogen and hydrogen will have a stable electronic configuration after that how many after sharing one electron with hydrogen nitrogen will have one two three four five six electrons it needs two more where will it come from so it will come from two more hydrogen atoms so it will share one hydrogen will come here and share one electron and another hydrogen atom will share one electron so two atoms uh, two electrons of nitrogen is left unshared okay so this is known as lone pair of electrons these are known as lone pair of electrons so the formula will be NH3 N H3 the formula NH3 okay now we talk about water We talk about water H2O. The formation of another polar covalent compound that is water. The first polar compo covalent compound is ammonia. The second one is water. The formula I will write it for you H2O. So since, since, it, is, since it is between the formation of compound between the two non metals, so therefore <coughs> atomic number is 1. Electronic configuration is 1. Oxygen, atomic number is 8. Electronic configuration is 2 and 6. We all know that. All right. Now, <clears throat> oxygen. Let's talk about the atom of oxygen. How many electrons does it have? It has 6 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and six electrons. How many electrons does the oxygen need to be stable? It needs two more. So since it is between hydrogen and oxygen, it is a coval uh, covalent compound. So one hydrogen atom will come and share its electron with one electron of oxygen. Now hydrogen will have two electrons satisfied, whereas oxygen will have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It needs one more to have a stable electronic configuration. So therefore, one hydrogen ion, uh, atom sorry, will come and share its only electron with one of the electron of oxygen. So therefore now oxygen will have a stable electronic configuration after sharing two electrons with hydrogen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now you can see over here the two pairs of electrons are left unshared. So these are called the, the pool. These are called lone pair of electrons. These are called the lone pair of electrons. So remember, ammonia will have one lone pair of electrons. 
water will have two lone pair of electrons in oxygen. Now we'll talk about uh, hydrogen chloride or HCl. It is between hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen will have one electron, whereas chlorine will have 17. Atomic, uh, atomic number is 17, so therefore chlorine will have se uh, seven electrons in the outermost shell or in the valence sh shell, two, eight, seven, and hydrogen will have only one. So now, chlorine atom will have how many electrons? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So how many electrons does chlorine need to be stable? It needs one more. So <clears throat> one hydrogen will come and share one pair, one electron with one uh, electron of chlorine. So therefore, chlorine will have uh, the stable electronic configuration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Satisfied? Hydrogen, one, two. Satisfied. Both of them, because hydrogen, you know that it follows, uh, hydrogen is the only element which follows a duplet rule, whereas the others, other elements will follow octet rule. So therefore, you can see during the in the formation of HCl, uh, we can see that there are three pairs of electrons left unshared. So these are called the lone pairs. And how many lone pairs of HCl does it have? In HCl, how many lone pairs does chlorine have? It will have three lone pairs. So uh, ammonia will have one lone pair, water will have two lone pairs, and uh, chlorine will have three lone pairs in HCl. So these are the formation, this is the formation of polar covalent compounds like water, ammonia and water, ammonia and uh, HCl. So we will talk about the uh, lone pair. Now what is a lone pair? Lone pair of electrons are pair of electrons not shared with any other atom. Okay, lone pair of uh, lone pair are electrons which are not shared with any other atom. So it is found in in your syllabus. We have ammonia, water, and HCl. Ammonia will have one, uh, water will have two, and chlorine will have three. Uh, hydro hydrogen chloride will have three lone pair of electrons. Now we come to the coordinate bond. We talk about the coordinate bond. So since we are running out of time, uh, we will leave it here, the formation of polar covalent compounds. Uh, we will talk about the coordinate uh, bond and the lone pair effect and so on and the properties and the comparison of electrovalent compounds and covalent compounds in the, in the next class. So I hope you have understood the formation of uh, covalent compounds, the polar covalent compounds and non-polar non-polar covalent compounds. So this much for today. Thank you so much.